This is a Rhino tutorial about how to create a previous studio project uh, to improve a portfolio or to represent a project uh, previously created. And so in this case, I'm going to model the unit that you see here and then show you how you can quickly aggregate that or stack it and combine it in different ways to study the potential of the unit beyond what was built in three dimensions. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is I have my Rhino set up so that I have the perspective view and the top view uh, visible. Uh, you can make them larger or bigger by clicking and dragging on the little gray line in between the actual viewports. I prefer to use the top and perspective views when I'm drafting. Uh, and what I'm going to do is think about uh, how to make the individual pieces for this unit. And so in this case, this unit was made up of four pieces of wood that came together to make a tube, and then that tube was repeated uh, tw two other times to create a unit of three wood tubes. Uh, and so I'm going to first by start by drawing kind of one of these pieces of wood. Notice that the corners of the wood were mitered together, and I'm going to capture that in my model so I can explain the project in a little bit more detail. So um, I'm going to start by uh, first just drawing in the plan top view kind of a uh, piece of the wood that is just that rectangular shape and so my wood was six inches long so I'm going to type I'm going to select the polyline and then click and type six enter and then click and then type 0.5 because the wood was half an inch thick and click type move my mouse to the left click type six click and then click the point again to complete that rectangle um, I want to include the miters as I mentioned and so I'm going to click polyline and draw a line just straight down by clicking uh, and hitting space to complete the command and then I'm going to rotate that line by 45 degrees to uh, create that 45 degree miter. So if I select the line and type R and enter, I select the point at the top select the point at the bottom and then notice as I move my mouse it kind of starts to suggest a circle and I'm going to type in 45 and then click to complete. Um, another way of doing that, so if you have another line on this side, uh, would be to select the line um, and use what's called the gumball. So if you don't have gumball turned on, which is this uh, red and green and blue object that keeps appearing, if you, if you type gumball in this case it's on for me so I'm not going to do anything, but you can hit O enter or then click on and what that does is it brings up the gumball. Um, so I'm going to select the line and then click this uh, little blue arc and type in 45 and notice that it now rotated that by 45 degrees. I'm going to undo if I want to rotate the other way. I select the line and then click that and type minus 45. And So now I have a line that's 45 degrees. It's not touching my rectangle however so I'm just going to select it, hit M, and then click the point and snap to that point. Um, if you don't have snaps turned on, you want to make sure you you set those. Uh, I think it's good to have like point, midpoint, center, intersection, and perpendicular on. Um, so now what I want to do is I want to trim this. So if I type uh, TR, select all of the objects and hit space, and now I can just click anything I want to go away or anything I want to subtract. And so I'm hit space again to complete. And now notice I have a um, piece of wood that has uh, 45 degree miters in two dimensions. Um, I, these are all individual lines right now and I want to combine them into one polyline. So if I select all of them and type join, enter, now I have four curves that are combined into one closed curve. Um, the next thing I want to do is make this 3D. So right now it's just the 2D profile of this piece of wood. And so I'm going to select the curve in plan uh, and then click over uh, into perspective is easier. So select the curve and type extrude and then move my mouse in the vertical direction. And I know that each of these tubes were 18 inches. So I'm going to type in 1.8 and enter. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is then copy this. So I'm going to select it and type C uh, and uh, select it in plan and type CO and move kind of click and move my mouse down I'm just trying to copy it and I'll put it in the right spot in a second um, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select it and then click that blue uh, 
curve and type 90 to rotate it. So now I have kind of this piece that's perpendicular. I'm going to move it then and snap it to um, the corner of the other piece itself. And so now what I have is uh, two of the planes for uh, this tube um, modeled. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select one and I'm just going to mirror it. So MI over this other piece of wood. So if I click kind of the center point or midpoint of that um, piece and move my mouse down and click, it mirrors that piece. And then I can also mirror this one since the, the wood is symmetrical. MI, click and move my mouse uh, to the right and now it's mirrored that piece. And so now what I have, if I look in 3D, are four pieces of wood that make up one of these tubes. They're all separate pieces. Um, what you could do at this point is select them all and Boolean union them together, and that would join them together kind of in a permanent way. I'm gonna make an exploded axon in a minute, so I'm just going to select them and type group to create one group um, uh, that I can move and select and click on kind of all together. Um, so group. The next thing I want to do is I now want to copy and paste them to together to kind of have this arrangement that I see uh, here. So I'm going to copy one, select it, CO. I'm going to copy from this point and then to this point. And then the same thing, I'm going to copy again from this point to that point. Now I know that there's a six inch offset in my unit, so I'm going to select this back one click the blue arrow of the bundle and click six. And then now I've got kind of these three tubes that are um, not joined or grouped, but three individual tubes. Uh, I want to be able to move them globally like this. So I'm just going to select them all and type group again. And so now I have a unit that is uh, one of these made pretty easily that shows the layers of construction. Um, and I can copy this the whole unit by selecting it and typing CO. Um, I can rotate this by selecting it and typing rotate or clicking the gumball and rotating it based around different axes. Um, and so I can quickly study different aggregations and different orientations of this unit that maybe I couldn't do or study as easily when building them. Um, I have a couple of examples of those to show you. So one of them is what happens if you stack them in a vertical way. Notice that I have lots of these aggregated, so you could keep growing this horizontally or vertically. And then this one looks at studying, okay, what if I flip them on the side and I have this very different kind of reading of the negative space through the tubes, a lot of depth in this one. Um, so say you study several different versions of that, maybe there's some that have more, some that have less, and you arrive at one that you think is kind of the best, I think then exporting some nice views is the next step in this. So um, you want to kind of get your view um, centered nicely on the page. If you right click on the perspective text up at the top, you can set view and cycle through some of these options. So like an, ac uh, an isometric would be kind of like the axons that we drew previously. Um, I'm going to turn off my other options just so that we're only looking at um, one. So if I have other things turned on in the file when I, when I change things to uh, isometric or perspective, it, it will kind of zoom around trying to capture everything. So if I just want to look at my final iteration, I'll do the same thing. So zoom back in, set view, and then you can go to isometric and it'll show you kind of think back to the axons isometric views that you did of the cubes in the first semester. So maybe I like perspective best. Let's say I get kind of a nice view that captures everything kind of with some good white space and this is the view that I want to export. Um, the next thing to look through is just to cycle through some of the um, display options. So each of these here is a different like default Rhino display. I've edited mine, so if you click pen, it might look a little different than my pen setting. Uh, if you click artistic, it might look a little bit different than my artistic setting. Um, but the the uh, trick is to set these to like look how you want them to, depending on the project, depending on the scale of what you're editing. Uh, so we're gonna export a couple of different options um, and then combine them in Photoshop. But first, let's, if you type options, 
uh, it brings up just all these different Rhino preferences. Display modes is what uh, allows you to edit these um, different settings. So like under artistic, for example, um, you know, there's all these different options. I, I always have the background set to a solid color. It defaults to an image file, which is this weird paper texture, which is not preferable. Um, so solid color, click it and then select, in this case I'm using white because I like the white background. Um, I've turned my ground plane off. If you want that on, it, it'll cast some shadows for you. Um, there's a couple other settings here that you might tweak or play around with. Um, it'll show you live time, if your computer's fast enough, kind of what it looks like to have certain things on and off. So you can do, you know, versions where you have um, lines turned on, lines turned off. Um, I, I, I think this looks pretty nice where you have a little bit of line work, but you have kind of a ghosted sort of shading as well. Um, you can also edit... Um, the line work itself. So in some cases Rhino defaults to have like curves and lines uh, based on the color of the layer um, or object and so I always set use a single color and so I'll set these to be kind of grays or blacks depending on what I'm doing so you might go in and edit some of that. Um, you can also play around with shadows and shading as well. And so this, the, all of these settings pertain just to this artistic view, and there's several others in here that you can tweak and edit as you need. Just know that when you edit any of them, it's editing it globally in the file itself. Um, so artistic view is a good one. Um, a couple others you know, that are nice, sometimes doing a rendered view is nice because then you can layer in some of the shadows. Again, you might tweak some of the settings if yours doesn't come out quite as nice right away. So now is the time to explore these different options um, and start to kind of manipulate them to get good drawings out of the file. It's, it's, sometimes it's nice to be able to quickly export a view to talk about a design with a client or with a professor or a classmate or colleague, uh, and you don't want to spend a lot of time making the most beautifully rendered thing initially because you just need good looking drawings to communicate uh, ideas or to be able to sketch on top of by hand. Um, so in any case, I'm going to um, export some of these views and then combine them in Photoshop. So uh, the first thing you want to do is type uh, view capture to file. And that's going to take whatever view you have on your screen and export it uh, as a file for you. And so some of these settings are important. Um, I have all of these unchecked. Uh, the transparent background is kind of nice if you're exporting. This basically makes a PNG. And so it's nice if you wanted to put things behind this. You could easily put things kind of behind the negative space and communicate lots of depth. So if you imagine like collaging this into a photograph or somewhere else, it could be something to explore with. In this case, I don't really mind because I am I just want the white background for now. Um, under resolution, this is where you have to, have to set uh, something nice. So I click custom, I click lock aspect, ra aspect ratio, and so what that's going to do is it's going to make sure that the width and the length stay the same no matter what paper size I set. Over here I set this to inches, and then I set my DPI to 300, and then I'm um, going to export this on 8, uh, 11 by 17 is the page size I want it to be on finally, and so I'm just, maybe I'll, I'll do 11, um, and I can scale that up and set it in Photoshop later, but I'm going to do 11 by, this is changing, notice as I type in different dimensions, this automatically changes for me, so I could set the eight and a half size and it'll change kind of the length accordingly or if I set the width it'll change um, the height accordingly. So um, these are the settings I hit apply and now it's asking me for somewhere to save it so I'm gonna uh, you can name it um, export uh, artistic Uh, and then it'll save kind of wherever you're telling it. So I would get organized. I have like a folder for SAID, a folder for the year, a folder for skills, lectures, Rhino Unit Demo. I think maybe yours might look like the year and communication skills. Uh, and then set JPEG. And then uh, hit save. And then it'll think about it for a second and export. Um, then without moving or zooming the view, if you go down and you set pen, uh, or one of the other toggles, you type view capture to file, 
same thing, go through these. It, if, I think it's smart enough now that it holds, it used to default back to the standard setting, but it's it should come up the same. Hit apply, tell you, tell it where you want it to say, name it, and export a series of those views. Um, and then what you can do is open those views, and I'll show you this in a second, and combine them nicely in Photoshop to have kind of this nice layered drawing. Um, Sometimes you can get by with just exporting one of them to sketch on top of. So like this artistic view, right? If you were to keep trying to talk about a design idea with a professor or a client, you could export this and show a lot about your project and it looks pretty nice as well. So you don't always have to combine things in Photoshop. Um, let me show you one more thing that you might choose to do to explain your uh, project and then we'll jump over to Photoshop. Um, so sometimes it's nice to show kind of an exploded version of your project, right? What uh, an exploded axon. Um, and so I'm gonna click, right click, hit set view, isometric northeast. And so that gets you into that isometric axon view. So to create this, um, I'll walk through the steps. So let's say you have your um, unit, individual unit uh, that you've made previously. Um, let's see, go this way. Um, and so with this unit, um, if you select it and type ungroup, it'll ungroup the, the grouped unit into the individual tubes. And the way that I'll do kind of uh, these axons a lot of times is I'll copy um, the pieces um, in, the, in like a right view kind of up vertically. So you can see in the parallel view how things are moving I just want to double check set view isometric northeast just make sure it's still set that way um, I'm gonna hide this for now so select it and type hide if you care about hiding um, but I'll move this up and then um, maybe what I'll do is I'll, I'll then I'll separate some of these pieces by selecting clicking the gumball uh, and typing in a dimension or maybe just clicking and dragging the gumball itself. So I'll move the top one up a little bit. I'll move this middle one up. Um, and then I'll take this unit um, and then copy it. Notice that I'm going back and forth between the perspective view and the right side view just so I can be sure that things are moving kind of as I want them to be. So I'll copy it kind of vertically and then um, kind of ungroup again so type ungroup and now these pieces have been separated into their individual uh, pieces of wood and I'll select them and maybe move them apart um, <clears throat> and then actually sometimes it's nice to like leave the evidence of what you're exploding behind so like in this case like I have that unit I think it's kind of nice and clear uh, you don't always have to do it that way, but so play around with uh, exploding things. Then in this view, you can take and draw lines. So if we type line and snap um, from the point um, up. So I have these like kind of construction lines or these exploded lines that are extending kind of up through up through the drawing, right? And so you, you keep drawing those lines and eventually arrive at kind of this exploded axon view. So I'll just do that one. Um, and then you can do the same thing, right? So if you, let's go back and just make sure we're at set view, isometric, northeast. And so it centers it nicely. And I have this kind of fitting on the page. If I right click, I can then come back to these pen settings or I can go back to kind of an artistic setting, export a series of those and then combine them in uh, Photoshop. So you might play around with ghosted. Um, so once you view captured to file several views, I think I did five for this. If you find the um, images that you'd saved previously and you um, open them, so I'll select them all, select them all, right click, open with Photoshop. <clears throat> and now I have like all of these different files open. Um, if you, uh, I'll click on just one of them and save as uh, Rhino 
normal units um, drawing. And then save it. Make sure it saves as a PSD file. Save. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just right go to each, click at the top uh, to, into the other files. I'm going to right click, and do duplicate layer, and then select under destination document Rhino units drawing. Hit OK. Same thing. So basically I'm just duplicating all of these layers into the same file so I can kind of explore merging them together. <clears throat> okay, so now I have, you can't see them because they're all on top of each other, but now I have all of these different files or images in here um, that I can explore with. So if I just turn, take this first one and change it to multiply, for example, it shows me the layer that's underneath it. And so I might then take that and turn the transparency down and start blending some of these different uh, layers together. Um, so explore with that, see what results in the best drawing. Sometimes it's a combination of a couple and you can get some really nice um, renderings out of your file um, pretty easily in Rhino. So thank you. Those are the quick tips to modeling a, th a unit in Rhino 3D and exporting views into Photoshop to combine them to create a graphically rendered drawing.